In 2009, I traveled to Toronto and made a friend named Bad News Brown. The DJ Stylist Awards is why we both were in town. We had never seen each other before, but still. When we crossed paths, we stopped and talked like brothers because real recognized real. He told me he lived in Montreal, and if I wanted to do some shows out there, give him a call. He told me some of what he had accomplished, but not all. I mean, this cat had done shows with like Kanye, 50, Soldier Boy, Nas, and Sean Paul. Bad News Brown, I'm kind of I'm enthused about the way he, he seems to want to approach music. Big up to Bad News Brown. And I wish you a lot of luck, a lot of love, dog. I told him I was doing my thing in Nova Scotia, and if you want to give me a CD, I'll take it there and be glad to promote you. His album was called Born to Sing, and he had an attitude like he was born to win. We kept in touch, and a few months later, when I put on a concert in memory of my cousin, who had been shot and killed, but I ain't have much paper, Bad News Bra told me, don't even worry, just put me on the poster. Give Henry the date in advance, and I'll make my way to Nova Scotia. Whatever I would do for that one weekend can be put on pause Cause I know you coming from the heart and I'm down for the cause The day of the show, I picked up Bad News Brown from the Halifax International Airport And that day I learned, nothing he said ever fell anywhere near short Bad News Brown was very professional Right from the time we got to the venue for sound check, he was in the zone And the second thing I learned that day was when it comes to music Bad News Brown was on a level of his own Yo, how you get up on that, bruh? And when he told me he had taught himself how to play in the downtown Montreal train station getting money with that classic Bad News grin on his face like it was funny. And anybody who knows Bad News Brown knows that look I'm talking about. It's like he lights right up and this crooked smile comes out the side of his mouth. He put the harmonica out and said, this little instrument has taken me far. And I like the fact that it's way more easy to carry than a drum or guitar. He said, when I travel, I don't gotta take much. And any type of music that comes on, I can have my own little touch. When all the rappers are fighting to get to the mic, I pull out the harmonica and freestyle whatever I like. We talked a lot that day, mostly about the moves we had made lately. He told me his main goal was to be able to help out financially in Haiti, because that's where he was born and would like to take his success back to. And for that, Bad News Brown was willing to do whatever he'd have to. He explained to me about how it was the Haitians who first started the rebellion against slavery. I listened closely and thanked him for the knowledge he had gave to me. Bad News Brown was Haitian and proud, and his trip to Halifax meant a lot, so he thanked me in return, even though at the show, there wasn't a big crowd. He said this would be his first of many visits, and he was glad he came. Matter of fact, Bad News Brown said he was so Scotian, and that he didn't even want to get back on the plane. For the next few months, we kept in touch by phone, and every time I called him, he'd be so excited because he had his favorite song of mine set as the ringtone, and I never even had it at this point. He'd pick up and be like, yo, dog, hard to be humble is my joint. And what was crazy is I always picture Bad News Brown traveling city to city, partying wild. But most times when we spoke, he always talked about his child and how he was trying to slow down and just spend time with his little man. He would always say, yo, I got to do it now while I can. 
When I finally touched down in Montreal and called Bad News Brown from the train station, he gave me his home address in Little Burgundy, and when I showed up, he was downstairs waiting. When I suggested we perform the Hard to Be Humble song live if he knew it, he said I was hoping you would ask, so I already went through it. Just call my name when you want me to come, and you don't even have to worry about the harmonica, son. That night, me and Bad News Brown did a show at Underworld where didn't nobody know me. He said now that he saw me rip it up in front of the Montreal crowd, that was just the start to what he was going to show me. DJ, let's run this hard to be part of the team right here. After the performance, he wanted me to have fun. He kept telling his boy Cena, yo, this guy had me in the club popping bottles down where he's from, so we gotta show him a good time tonight. Cause Halifax, you know I'm coming back down to Scotia when the time is right. We stayed up and had drinks till the next day. And right up until the time I got in the taxi and pulled away, every memory I had of Bad News Brown was good. So to see him again, I thought for sure that I would. I still remember him saying before I left, I'm coming back to Scotia again soon and it's on, yo. We talked New Year's 2011, just a quick convo. I told him what's up with me and asked what's up with him. He told me he had recently gotten a lead role in a film and it was supposed to play in theaters all across Quebec. So now the movie industry gonna have to give him respect. I'm gonna break this down for you once so you understand. Before you do that, I want you to send a clear message to them. Have all these motherfuckers. Child from the IV11 motherfucker. I was like, damn, you's a smooth brother. But I ain't mad. Go ahead, do what you do, brother. We wished each other a happy new year and hung up the phone. And I never thought that would be our last conversation until one day cleaning the office in my home, I found one of his Born to Sin posters tucked away in the back of my closet. And I remember he had left a whole stack that he asked me to pass out and I still had some in the van. But how this one poster got put to the side, I didn't understand. So I decided why not go ahead and put it on the wall. Went back to cleaning and a few hours later, I got the call from my homie, I rest smooth. He asked me if I heard the bad news, and when he told me, I hoped that he lied. He said, I think your friend Bad News Brown died. And when he first said it, I didn't know what to say or what to do, except ask how he knew and hoped it wasn't true. Smooth said he saw on Cordell's Facebook status, and he was sitting there still just looking at it. He read Bad News Brown was found on the ground dead, and it didn't say how he knew, but that's all that it said. So after we hung up the phone for the first little while, I just sat there and probably was in denial. But deep down, something told me that poster turned up that morning for a reason. And I hung it up because now, that's the only way I'm gonna get to see him. So after trying to figure out what to do, I thought I might as well at least try and give him a call on the cell. When I didn't get no answer, I felt sick. 
thinking how could something like this be happening so quick. Next I got the call from Logic too, who said when I heard I automatically thought of you, and that's when it all started to hit home. Right after me and Logic hung up the phone, and I looked up on the poster at Bad News Brown's face, and tried to tell myself I guess my brother's gone to a better place, but I wonder how did my good friend die? Was he sick? Did he have a disease? He definitely didn't seem like the type that had enemies. I hope nothing bad happened to someone so quick, but I know how the game can get, so I figured I probably should. Call Henry and see if I can find out what happened to my good friend. And if you don't already know, the story don't have a good end. The night of Friday, February 11th, Bad News Brown was chilling with his boo. Then left to go meet someone, and no one knows who, but he's beaten badly and shot. Pronounced dead by the time police even got to the spot. Hearing this was like torture, I cried. As Henry told me, funeral arrangements would be made once his parents arrived. I tried to imagine why someone would do this to my brother. And picture this little boy Isaiah that now has to grow up with only his mother. Like really the person that did this to him? They must not have known him. Cause Bad News Brown was always down to help. And I heard he had once told me that he wanted to go back to church. And teach the kids how to play the instrument he had gotten from his papa. And it was really weighing heavy on my brain that he never got to. He had also told me about a modeling agency he wanted to set up. Plus a clothing line called for Layman Young I was supposed to help get up. Of all the artists and musicians I knew, this guy had such big plans. But now for all that, he wasn't going to get the chance. I couldn't stop thinking till it was getting so late, I figured I would. Check the news and not because I wanted, but I felt like I should. I was so tired to keep my eyes open, I barely could. And all of a sudden, the power went out in my whole neighborhood. And it wasn't even storming outside. I went to dig for a flashlight in the darkness. I realized it was Bad News Brown telling me, Go ahead and sleep, my brother. Stop worrying about me, because now I'm resting in peace, my brother. No one can touch me or harm me anymore. And you know I'm going to be waiting when you get to God's door. But until then, when you think of me, don't be sad. Cherish the good memories that we had. And keep them in the front of your brain. Let all the good times spent together ease the pain and use it to motivate you. Stay close to those who love you and away from those who hate you. Take the swag tour we talked about and make it major. Cause like I said to you before, it's a whole different flavor. Plus, all this violence needs to stop and we all know it's true. And you already know, I'm gonna be right there with you on stage beside you. So when you need help, let my spirit guide you. Use your lungs to spread the word against guns. Try to make people see that all these murders just ain't right. I know my friend didn't go out that night looking for a fight. And at 33 years young, he shouldn't have lost his life. Nobody deserves to be beaten and shot to death. So really, all that's left is Bad News Brown's father, mother, his son, and Bad News Brown's brothers. The rest of his family, fellow musicians and friends that almost just hope we get to see him again in a better place. And for me, I'll forever have faith that someone can be inspired in a positive way by these here memories of Paul Frappy A. Rest in peace, Bad News Brown. I'll never forget you, my brother. He was a friend, he was a father, he was a, he was a good person before everything else.